hyperactive malarial splenomegaly syndrome or tropical splenomegaly syndrome. Hyperactive splenomegaly syndrome or tropical splenomegaly syndrome is a massive enlargement of the spleen due to an exaggerated immune response to repeated attack of malaria. This hyperreactive malarial splenomegaly syndrome is most frequent cause of massive tropical splenomegaly in malarious areas. Slightly it is more common in males and it is more common in adolescents. Tropical splenomegaly syndrome is characterized by massive splenomegaly, hepatomegaly, and marked elevation in levels of serum IgM and malarial antibody. When we came to pathogenesis, hyperactive malarial splenomegaly syndrome is caused by an aberrant immune response to a chronic antigenic stimulation in subjects long exposed to malaria parasites. The syndrome is characterized by micro Globulinemia with overproduction of immunoglobulin, especially of the IgM class. This IgM class exaggerates into high molecular immune complex and causes persistent splenomegaly because of prolonged clearance from the reticulondotelial tissue. Cryoglobulins and autoantibodies, such as, for instance, rheumatoid factor, contribute to the macroglobulinemia. Genetic factors are likely to be involved in the development of tropical splenomegaly syndrome. So it's a combination of immune response and genetic factors. The most common clinical presentation of tropical splenomegaly syndrome are chronic abdominal swelling. Some patients may experience recurrent sharp pains in the upper abdomen, possibly due to perisplenites or splenic infarcts. Other patients may have weight loss and cachexia. On examination, there is massive splenomegaly and hepatomegaly. The patients typically lack malaria, parasitemia, and the fever on presentation. They are not symptomatic. There is no active malaria in this case. There are a lot of differential diagnoses. Since tropical splenomegaly syndrome is a diagnosis of exclusion, we should have to exclude infectious causes, infiltrating diseases, immunologic disorders, liver cirrhosis, metabolic causes, and dermatologic malignancies that cause massive splenomegaly. There are diagnostic criteria for hyperreactive malarial splenomegaly syndrome. Those include splenomegaly greater than 10 cm below costal margin, Elevated serum IgM level to standard deviation or more above the local mean. Clinical and immunologic response to anti-malarial therapy. And regression of splenomegaly by 40% by 6 months after start of therapy. And also there is high antibody levels to plasmodium species and exclusion of other causes, other causes of splenomegaly. In tropical splenomegaly syndrome, the peripheral smear shows normostic normochromic anemia with elevated retic count. Pancytopenia may also be seen as a result of hypersplenism. Malarial parasites are not found in the peripheral blood because they are not having active infection. There is elevation in serum levels of polyclonal IgM with cryoglobulinemia, reduced C3, and the rheumatoid factor may also be positive. Increased levels of IgM and anti-malaria antibody, hepatic sinusoidal lymphocytosis on liver biopsy, and the response to anti-malaria therapy, they favor a diagnosis of tropical splenomegaly syndrome. Response means improvement in clinical conditions such as reduction in IgM, malaria antibody titer within three months of continuous anti-malaria treatment. When we come to treatment, anti-malarias are the cornerstone of treatment for hyperactive malaria splenomegaly syndrome. The selection of drug is based on the pattern and the prevalence of drug resistance in the patient's geographic area. In malaria and DMK area, treatment should be prolonged maybe from months to years, and it should be continued regularly. Response may be seen within six months, especially three to six months after commencing treatment, and the relapse may occur when therapy is discontinued. So sometimes long-term treatment might be needed, even lifelong. If the Malaria is endemic in that area. Anti-malaria clear the antigenic stimulus 
caused by repeated malarial infection and help the immune system to return to normal. The selection of anti-malaria depends upon the local sensitivity pattern. Chloroquine weekly or other drugs according to the local sensitivity pattern can be given. Parimethamine may also be an alternative medication. Most of the time we give chloroquine 300 mg one tap day uh, weekly, once weekly uh, for six to one year, six months to one year. The response to therapy is guided by reduction in clinic size, a decrease in serum IgM levels, correction of anemia and azel blade dyscariasis, and a general improvement in patient's well-being. Sometimes this huge spilonomegaly can severe anemia, which might require blood transfusion. In summary, hyperactive malaria spilonomegaly syndrome results from abnormal immunological response due to repeated attack of malaria and is usually seen in those who live in malaria and endemic area. The main features of this syndrome are hepatosplenomegaly, high IgM levels, and hepatic lymphocytosis on liver biopsy, in addition to features of hypersplenism. Tropical splenomegaly syndrome should usually be included in the differential diagnosis of massive splenomegaly, especially in tropical and subtropical countries. Months to years and sometimes lifelong anti-malarias are the mainstay of treatment for tropical splenomegaly syndrome. Thank you for watching.